On today's video, we're going to talk about right front load. Everybody asks, how much spring load? What should my load numbers be? Well, we're going to touch that. We're going to touch on that on every spring rate. And I'm going to change your mind by the end of this video, so stick around to the end, because I'm going to change your mind on what you think's been going on. Hey, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to rate the springs on the right front. <clears throat> we're going to start on a 450, 500, 550, 600, and 650 spring. And we're going to travel them three inches. And I'll tell you why we're not doing more. Uh, I'm going to, I'll show you why we're not doing more. But we're going to travel them three inches. We're going to get the rates at three inch. We're going to get the amount of spring travel. And then we're going to compare that to how they rate in the rater. Okay, uh, so a lot of things you've heard about load numbers. Uh, we're going to try to clarify up some of the myths and give you the facts. Okay, so maybe when we're done with this video, uh, we'll help figure out some things and maybe we'll uh, just realize that we got more we need to learn. So share, like this video. Um, definitely, this is going to be one you're going to want to comment on. So comment on it, tell your friends, help us grow our channel, and let's go back and get started on this project. All right, see you in the back. Hey, before we get started here, a couple of things. I really need you guys to like and share these videos. We've been a little lax on that lately, and our YouTube's not pushing us out there as much. So if you guys would help trick the, the algorithm in YouTube by sharing, liking, uh, subscribe to our channel. We need growth in our channel. So subscribe to our channel. The more you like or comment on this stuff, uh, the more they'll push it out there for more people to see. So you could please help us with that. It goes a long ways, guys. Thanks. Here we got this jig set up. What we're going to do is we're going to test different spring rates. Uh, at one inch, two inch, three inch, we're going to test a 450, a 500, a 550, a 600, and a 650. We're going to test all those springs. Now, I won't go through all the motion. We're going to do the 450, and I'll show you how that's done. Uh, we'll go through that motion, um, but it's repeat, rinse, repeat, you know, and then we'll show you the data. So let's get started with uh, putting our initial load we're going to set each spring rate at 600 pounds load uh, with the load stick, and then I'll show you that when we get there. It's a little hard to reach back here, but we're up to 300 pounds. Like I said, we're going to put uh, 600 pounds of load in. Um, there is some data on this about how straight the spring bolt is to the pocket. Um, it was pretty straight. And I'll, I will share that with you. Um, like I said, it was pretty straight. But when we're all done, the spring's going to be really crooked, and you're going to be surprised how crooked it is. Okay, we might be a pound or two off, but for starters, we're setting at 600 pounds. That's where we're going to start to test that. So we're at 600 pounds. And we'll start loading from there. So we do already have our load stick set up. We're setting at ride height. We are on a seven and three quarter ride height. 
uh, center of the ball joint here is in line with our bolts. So we're going to go ahead and test this on up one inch at a time. Okay, originally I had a digital scale set up here for one inch travel, but since we added the spindle and the brake to get the weight of this, it doesn't really fit. So we're just gonna go based on our turns. I, I got a mark here. I know how uh, four turns is one inch. Um, so we'll just do that and we'll show it each time. Okay, that's one inch. And these may vary a little bit from our original data that we'll show. Uh, it's always gonna, we've had the lower in and out a bunch. Um, this lower is on bearings. The bolts are not tight. Uh, so they are like they should be. That's two inches. That's four inches. So that's three inches of travel, okay? What, what happens in the next inch is the spring bucket moves more than it did in the first three inches. So if you see from our paperwork, that we'll show here in a little bit that we moved um, about 650 thousandths every inch at the center of the bucket. But in the last inch, we move about 750 thousandths. So the last inch really starts swinging the arc harder. So it does change it quite a bit. Also, we start out by shooting a laser down through center line of the bolt to a crosshair pad that we have prepared in the bottom. And we was on center line, front to back, 80 thousandths back this way. So from side to side, our center of our bolt, center line hits about 80 thousandths behind center line of the spring pad. So uh, I'll bring the camera around here and I'll show you this uh, spring bucket and how it's misaligned. But this is typical. This is a Chevelle frame built back in probably 2010 we were not quite as um educated then as we are today about stuff so i think they did a really good job of building this frame uh and getting it right i originally was going to move this jack bolt to center it up um but the way it is i, I left it alone i don't think we're going to move it and see what the results are because I don't think the results are big enough for all the effort it would take. So let me let me move the let me move the camera. 
over here and we'll show you the spring. So that's the spring at the three inches of travel. That's a 450 pound spring. Um, it's not too bad in the cup, but you can see the springs push towards the front and the cup is pushing it towards the back. Hey, before we get started, I'd like to thank a couple of people that helped make this video possible. Kind of sponsors, they help in saving me some money. First is Larry Withlow out of Canton, Georgia. He does this steering gear box. It's a factory box. It's not a six to one or an eight to one, but it's a factory box. And I'll leave a link in the video uh, description below because Larry's been a longtime supporter of us and friend of our um, channel and our business. So he helped me with the box and I appreciate that. Saved me a lot of money. And Arrow Wheels, we didn't use a wheel, but Arrow gave us a couple of wheels to use. We were gonna use the wheel and the tires so we'd have more realistic weight. Some guys load stick with the wheel and tire on, some guys don't. But for the video's sake and not being able to see and everything, we went ahead and did it without the wheel. The Arrow Wheel, all the great people over at Arrow Wheels, thank you for providing us those wheels. We will do an offset, a back offset or an offset wheel offset video uh, showing you those wheels at a later date. So look forward to that. And again, thank you to these people for helping. I appreciate it. All right, we're back. We've done the testing uh, from back and we're, we got the results. So let's take a look at them results, okay? So if you look at this chart here, the first thing you'll see is that we tested a 450, 500, 550, 600, and 650 spring. We preloaded each spring to 600 pounds. And then we started the test and one inch, two inch, three inch travel. The reason we didn't go to four is because the lower control arm started to bind at four. Later in the video, I'll show you those pictures. But we did a three inch test, and on the 450, it went 808, 1022, 1250. And as you can see, as we increased the spring rate, the load increased across the chart. The one inch on the 650 is 890. The three inch on the 650 is 1482. So we made, you know, 230 pound roughly increase between 450 and a 650. <clears throat> and as you can see from that chart, we really could have, we really could obtain a lot of the numbers we're looking for. So if you are looking for a right height number, you know, which would have been the 600, and you're looking for a three inch number, uh, one, uh, 1239, then you're gonna have to be on a 500 pound spring. If you're gonna hit two numbers precisely, you're gonna have to be on a given spring rate and kind of on a given uh, spring brand even, okay? It's not so important. As you can see, you can, you can fluctuate, fluctuate the, the rates that you want to be at. So you're either going to set an up number, which is like setting a right height, uh, your 600-pound number in this case, which is going to vary for every car, okay, every setup. These numbers are just like a suggestion. The, the chassis builder says, hey, I want you to be at this 650 at right height. Well, it's you need to know what right height, what down number, what spring rate. Okay, those are the three things you need to know. Without that information, you're just blindly doing something. Okay, so when he gives you this information, it's just a suggestion. Okay, best thing to do is to go out and set your car at right height, have your car scaled out, set your car at right height, and then test load test your own numbers and establish what would be your number for a 500 pound spring you know where we have the 600 pound that would be your number 625 650 575 whatever that number is that's your number at right height that's what it takes to hold your car up at right height okay 
The second part of the chart is spring travel. That's a measurement we took from the table to the control arm, and we documented the travel. The load change is the next section, and that's how much the spring changed um, in each one, two, and three inch position, along with uh, the total gain. And then the next group is the travels, travel change. Basically, we change, you know, basically we're right in that 690 thousands. In the four inch of travel, it goes well out into the 750 range. So the arc of the lower control arm starts gaining more in the fourth inch of travel. That's not why we didn't check it there. We didn't check it there really because of the clearance issues. So if your frame's not been clearanced around your lower control arm, you're on a stock lower control arm, then it needs to be clearanced down there. Okay, very simple to do with a zip, zip wheel on your grinder. Just cut it right on off. Okay, so not a big deal. And then the, the last part of the chart is we did the same rates in a rater. So we took the 450. We put it at 600 pounds of load. We traveled at 658 thousandths, and it gained rate, as you can see. So this is the difference between a spring raider and the car. There's a difference in loads. Um, on, the, on the 450, it's um, around 300 pounds at the three inches. So if you have ideas and comments of why that is, uh, feel free to go ahead and comment them ideas. Um, because, you know, theoretically, you would think it would be need to be straight up, you know, it would be straight up. Uh, also, if you feel like there's a need for uh, a spring to be rated different. Okay. Now I'm not a big fan of one inch, one inch, but that's what we do. But if a uh, spring needs to be rated in the arc, if that would be better information or not, then we'll comment that. Okay. Um, so in the video, if you noticed in the video, when we did the 450 spring, our load numbers at one inch, and uh, we're not the same. I don't remember them exactly, but we were 808 on the test and about 833 on the video. And if I remember right, we were about 138, 140 pounds heavier at the three inch number. Okay. And I told you you'd be surprised of my, how the spring changed, the spring angle changed. And in the video, if you notice, that spring angle didn't change much. Well, the difference is I forgot to put a bushing in. OK, so on that spring cup I was using, I put a temp, temp gum bearing in on top of the calm ball. OK, and that allowed me to put that load in there easily without a lot of effort. So when we put it back together, the bushing allowed the calm ball to create angle. Without the bushing, it held the cup 90 degrees to uh, pretty close to 90 degrees to the jack bolt okay and the problem between the jack bolt the jack bolt angle and the lower control arm angle are within about three degrees of each other the problem is is when you set the spring in there the spring does not set at the same angle um, so we're in there about 27 to 30 degrees of angle but the spring sets way uh, canted towards the front of the car so that is going to differ in every control arm probably uh, and definitely between brands so um, it it makes a little difference um, with all the angle in it as you see in this picture it it makes the spring actually softer so by tying the spring up and keeping it more square to the bolt by force which might be a nodi cup or a drop cup uh, or just keeping the cup from moving, then the rate's going to go up. This could be uh, some kind of benefit for you, and it definitely could be some kind of disadvantage for you. Okay, so 
once you increase that rate, you're going to have to control that rate with the shock. Uh, so it depends on what you want in, out of your car. If you're really wanting more load at a certain height, uh, you know, for example, if you want to be on a soft spring, then having more load at the down number, the 1250, may not be enough to keep the car off the off the racetrack. You know. And what determines what's well, what what determine what keeps that car off the track is going to be load. Okay, what makes your car get to the track easier than your buddy's car is not necessarily load. You can be on the same load and your car bottom out. You know, there's a lot that goes into braking and different things that creates load uh, that's transferred to the front of the car. Okay, roll center. Um, center of gravity, the height of center of gravity, uh, the, the transfer rate for that. So there's a lot of things going on there that makes your car hit the ground, uh, the velocity, the distance that it travels. So there's a lot of things going on there that can change why one car hits the ground and the other car doesn't, okay, more than just a sheer load number, okay? But in this case, uh, 1250 may be or is probably a little low. But the reason a lot of people are picking a smaller spring or, or a lighter spring is because it becomes much easier to control. So instead of screwing up your spring rates and your tables and your load at the tire, it fix your rebound in your shock, okay? If you don't know how to fix your rebound in your shock, call us and I'll help you through that process. Uh, but what's a good load number for your car? In a down number and an up number, well, first and most important to me is, can I keep my car off the racetrack? Okay, that's important to me. I want to keep my car off the racetrack because when I hit the track, it's slowing me down in a way I don't want to be slowed down. Okay, so my down total load is going to determine that. Um, this car is going to determine that, as I said. So let's say we're on a 550, 1350 number. Uh, that's what it's going to take to keep my car off the track. Um, then that's where I'm going to be. And if if I have to run a 550 spring and the spring pocket's messed up, maybe I need to fix the spring pocket. We are going to venture into um, some of the spring pocket in a stock lower, in a fabricated lower. Uh, it's wide open. You can do whatever you want. Um, so fixing it's not a problem. Moving it from its proper position is not a problem. Uh, even though they're all not supposed to be moved, they all are moved. So um, I guess in this case, it's better to ask for forgiveness. So everybody's doing it. I guess that's not right, but that's the way that it's being done. Um, so either they can't track it or they don't want to track it or they don't feel like it's a nece uh, uh, necessary to track it, but it's not really being um, teched by the tech officials and the rules. So figure out what load you need on the down number, figure out what spring you need. So in this case, we're saying 1350. We're saying a 550 spring is what we're going to use. We could use a different spring, a heavier spring, or even a lighter spring and increase the load. So it's not the spring rate, but the load. So if I'm on um, uh, eight, a four eight, a four compression eight rebound shock, then I'd probably want to be down on spring uh, rate. And that way my rebound rate would be less if my spring rate's less. So uh, I would probably want to try to run a little softer spring to make my rebound and the shock work better. That would be something you'd do at the track. Don't try to make your whole season out of this. Okay, get the shock fixed, get the rebound fixed, make your shock guy do it right, okay? Uh, this is what's going to make you race well. So if it's one night, that's fine, but don't make a season out of it. Um, so you can get to different numbers with different springs pretty easily, okay? But just remember, if my spring rate goes down, my shock reacts better, okay? But I can still get it up in my... 1350 range. Okay, my ride height, my initial ride height is going to go up and bump's going to change a little. The bump steer is going to change a little if your car is kind of not right. So you need to know um, where your bump steer is. 
we'll do a video on that. So keep your eyes open for that. Uh, and then if your bump steer is right, you can fluctuate that load and ride heights a little bit uh, to fluctuate that load to keep the car off the racetrack and to give your shock more response or more rebound. So if you have questions, comment. Uh, it's kind of a long video with a lot of information to absorb. Um, so <laughs> if, you, if you do have questions, either comment or call me. Our number is 620-326-3152. Uh, uh, you can call. We're here 8 to, eight to 5 every day of the week, um, Monday through Friday. Uh, we, we do work Saturdays, but a lot of times that's to get caught up time. So uh, call us, text me, message me on Facebook. Um, just reach out if you have questions if you have or comment in the, in the deal. Uh, and if you want to see other videos, comment that too. So God bless you. This year's uh, 2024 is going to be exciting. Uh, I, I'm sure it's going to bring a lot of new things to racing. Um, so God bless you. Go fast and we'll see you next time.